Hey, it's Sabrina. So I know I said that I wouldn't be uploading a haul on my channel anytime soon. However, I was recently at the public library and they had this huge giant sale. So I got like 10 or 12 books for around $5. So I thought I'd kind of just share with you all the stuff that I picked up. Some of these books I did not get from the library that I kind of ordered recently. There's maybe two of them in here. Uh, but anyways, let's just go ahead and get started. The first one is one that I ordered online and it's the um, Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, which is like everyone and their mom has heard about this book. Super popular. Ever since sit, can I talk? Ever since I switched to being uh, cruelty free and more plant based diet. I've been wanting to kind of minimalize some of the things in my life and spend a lot less and declutter. So I thought that since I'm kind of going through a lot in my personal life and trying to work on me and my relationships with, with people, that I thought that this would be a great addition to my library. I will read it very, very soon. Um, just not anytime within this next month, but I do plan on reading it and I'm excited because I've heard really revelatory and great things about it. All right, this next book is one that I studied somewhat while I was in college. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I got my degree in behavioral science with an emphasis in sociology. And so uh, because I studied sociology and I loved it so much, this particular book was one that I studied somewhat. I didn't read the whole entire text. It's definitely a goal of mine. And this is Cla History and Class Consciousness by George Lucas. This is a study of Marxism and basically the study of the different classes within our society. Uh, like classes in, in the sense of like wealthy, poor, uh, middle class and stuff like that and how it affects our society. And uh, I just lately have been into books that are more going to educate me, not necessarily books that are just ones that are for pleasure. So I saw this and thought 25 cents, why not? I've never read this whole entire book and I would love to be able to be more versed and diverse within the sociology anthropological community. All right, this next book is also another educational type book that I'm kind of excited to read about and it is The Mismeasure of Man by Stephen Jay Gould and the definitive definitive refutation to the argument of the bell curve. So this is kind of uh, talking about the bell curve and the controversy around it and how in our society how we classify and rank people based off their genetics and their gifts and yeah, I just think that it's super interesting because when it comes to academics, I feel like the way our current society... Can I talk? <laughs> the current society that we live in now is very skewed on how we measure intelligence and, uh, I don't know, the the worth of people based off of specific way we are tested. And so I think this is very interesting. And let me know if you've read this because I'm curious to see if there's someone out there that I could kind of discuss this with. This next book is the, um, Anthony Trelope. Trelope, I'm so sorry for butchering his name. I'm assuming it's pronounced with a certain accent, but me being an American with terrible, uh, with can't, I cannot pronounce things unless it's Spanish and this is the way we live now. And this is the discussion or this kind of, this book is about, uh, it's set in London in the 1800s and it's kind of talking about uh, just different institutions and exclusivity, exclu exclusivity in London and I don't know, it kind of goes along with some of the other books that I picked up. I've never heard about this book and so I feel like it's a classic I should know about it and it just seems really interesting and it says the way we live now and popular on its first appearance is now widely recognized as Trelope's masterpiece and unorthodox satire with an happy ending it explores decadence and change in what Frank Kermode calls a world increasingly more congenial to the spectacular than to the gentleman I don't know that just sounds really good so if you've read this let me know all right, so this book is historical fiction. It's called The Anchoress by Robin Cadwallader. And this is set in the 1200s in England. It's about a girl who wants to be an anchoress, which is basically being um, a holy woman shut away from the world. And the reason why she decides to do this is because she has a lot of tragedy and things go on in her life that she kind of wants to run away from. And so that's the basic premise of the story. I've never read a historical fiction novel that was set in the 1200s. So uh, it's not super big. So I feel like I could read this and hopefully I really enjoy it. It got a high rating by Elizabeth Gilbert, who I think is the author of E. Pray Love. 
not sure though. So I'm excited for this one. I'm gonna read it soon. Okay, so this next one I'm like even more excited about than the last one because it's also kind of an historical fiction and this is called Girl at War by Sarah Novick. Oh wait, unless is this a biography? Maybe this is an autobiography. Wow, let me know down below if you know. Maybe it's an autobiography, but I think it the girl who wrote this book, it's about her story. And yes, it is. It's set in 1991 in Croatia. And it's about a girl and her coming of age story and about her living in the middle of civil war in the middle of Yugoslavia. And so I just think that it's so interesting. It says 10 years later, Anna, Anna is in college, in a college student in Manhattan. Even though she's tried to move on from her past, she can't escape her memories of war. So, I don't know. This is a reader's choice pick. I think a lot of book clubs have read this, but I'm really excited for this because it sounds super interesting. Anything about war pretty much um, gets me, so... I don't know. I find those types of things interesting. Okay, so this next book is a classic that I've never read and I've heard pretty good things about it. I mean, I don't know. I talked a little bit about it or learned a little bit about it in high school, but I've never actually read it. And this is Uncle Top's Cabin by Harriet Beecher Stowe. And I think with just the way things are kind of going in our current society now, I feel like this is pertinent to a lot of things and I think it's about time that I read this because one of my goals this year and just in my life in general is to be like really well read before I die and I would love to have read more classics and I feel like I haven't read that many at least not recently so this is one that I need to read that I'm looking forward to. In honor of February the month of love also Black History Month and uh a lot of contemporary reads. I decided to grab Dear John by Nicholas Sparks. Nicholas Sparks is hands down one of my favorite um, romance novel writers, which I wouldn't even classify him as a romance novel writer because I feel like he writes about so much more than just a beautiful love story. And I have never actually seen Dear John or read this book, but I know what it's about. In my um, particular religious community, uh, Dear John is exactly, I, I wonder if it was taken from this because it's te technically when someone's like away on their mission or at war or whatever and you kind of say, hey, I'm breaking up with you and I know that that's kind of what this is about, but I'm really excited and I don't know if I'll get to it this month because this month's already almost over and I was hoping to read more love stories in the month of, of February, but uh, I'm still looking forward to this because I love Nicholas Sparks, so you can't go wrong with a Nicholas Sparks book. So this next book is actually an ARC that I found at my library. I'm assuming that someone was sent this by the author and then they just didn't like it or decided to just donate it to the library. So I'm kind of like excited to have an ARC copy even though I know that this has already been published. It's not a new book. But uh, and I'm also excited because the author is Asian. Uh, he's from Indonesia and he went to Stanford. So I think that's super cool. But this is called A Bees and Mist, and it's about, this appeals to my anthropological, like, cultural, or, I don't know, like, my interest in, and, um, I don't know, how I, I just really love learning about different cultures and different societies and how they function and why they are the way they are. And so uh, this novel is about like a really strong um, maternal family and it's about a girl who gets married at a really young age and then she uh, has a daughter and how like there's a lot of dark secrets in their family and her husband's family and I don't know, it's, it's a debut novel so I'm in curious to to see what this is about. I also think the book is kind of pretty, so let me know if you've heard of this, if you know anything about it, because it sounds really great and I hope it's good. I really do have high hopes for this one. So this next book I got because I wasn't even sure if I have it already, which is kind of sad, like I should know the books that I have. That totally shows you the uh, book hoarding issue I have. Uh, this is The Other Queen by Philippa Gregory. I know I have The Other Boleyn Girl, The White, the White Queen and the Red Queen, but I have no idea if I have this one. I'm pretty sure I don't, but for like 50 cents, you can't go wrong with the Philippa Gregory novel if you're a historical fiction fan, so yes. Okay, so this book is totally appealed to the Texas girl in me, and if you didn't know, I'm originally from Texas and I now live in Utah, and I saw this book and I was like, it's like my eagle eyes just like honed in on it. I was like, I wonder what that's about. That sounds so interesting. This is The Lone Star Nation by H.W. Brands. And this is basically 
like a retelling of the Battle of Alamo and how Texas gained its independence. So it's definitely not a nonfiction uh, biography type book. It's definitely uh, just a retelling and kind of uh, this author writes about Stephen Austin, about the different people that were part of uh, the making of the Texas independence. And so I just thought, whoa, like this book looks so cool and historical fiction once again. And I would just love to learn a little bit more about the place that I'm from. A lot of the stuff I learned while I was in high school, so a lot of it I already know, but I think learning it from this perspective of having someone, you know, bring these characters to life is going to make it so much more enjoyable for me than just reading a regular Texas history book. All right, and the last book that I picked up is Ship of Fools by Catherine and Porter. Um, I don't really know what this is about, but I think it looks cool. And I it's had really great readings on Goodreads. So I mean, that's all I can tell you about this. You know, I don't let me know if you know about this. Um, yeah. Oh, apparently it's a collection of stories. Good to know. So those are all the books that I picked up recently. Let me know down below if you've read any of these or if any of these sparked your interest or if you want to buddy read any of these with me because um, if I get a buddy, I'm more likely to read it very soon as opposed to putting it off till later. But that is it. I will talk to you guys very, very soon. And of course, thanks for watching. Last week, however, this Friday, the topic is a wild card. So you can go back and do previous topics that you missed out on or skipped 